Good evening. Okay, that's it. Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Poison Akami here, me, myself and I back out again with another video. And today's video, I'm going to be talking about optimized combos. As you've seen in those first two clips there, there are two really good combos. One performed by myself, which was the first one, and the second combo was actually performed by E. We found that Jigen was a very good character to actually perform combos with because you can combo off of his regular jutsu. Not only that, but you can charge his jutsu to and actually get more stun as well. This whole combination was actually done by jutsus back to back, and it was actually very useful in terms of actually making a full combo with optimized damage. With this footage that we have here, we actually came to the conclusion that if you can find a way to actually supply a jutsu within your mashing combinations and then just go from a series of jutsu from there, you're pretty much good. So as you can see from my uh, combo here, I did a Jigen Jutsu with a mixture of a Naruto Jutsu and then I did Nar uh, sorry, I did Jigen's Charge Jutsu and then I did uh, his massive Jumbo Cube Jutsu as well, did a lot of damage. So you're probably wondering, so why are they making sure that they're getting such large amounts of damage in such a short amount of time? Well, because when all the subs are gone, as we actually demonstrated, they don't come back for another 15 seconds. So that means you have 15 seconds to get out as much damage as you can, actually quite similar to Demon Slayer's combo mechanics. And then with the factor of damage scaling as well, if you haven't seen or learned anything about damage scaling, I've actually got a video of it on my channel, Analyzing when Falco looked into it. And also on E's channel, there is a video about damage scaling on his theory about why it works the way that it does but with damage scaling in mind you obviously got to make sure that you're not mashing or providing too much large damage uh, large amounts of damage over a long period of time it has to be during an amount of time that is quick and easy thus we found that combining jutsus together was the best bet to actually do a combination of attacks with large amount of damage in a short amount of time to which the damage scaling doesn't interrupt so much. So thankfully we were able to think of these jutsus where we could combine them together with Jigen's regular jutsu, the charge jutsu, uh, a massive stun jutsu like Naruto's jutsu. Naruto's jutsu doesn't actually provide that much damage in comparison to other jutsus. However, it's very good for actually doing guard breaks or providing a lot of stun. I'm not gonna lie, I can see CC2 actually nerfing Naruto's jutsu there because it is pretty overpowered. And then obviously ending it with the jumbo cube box thing by, Jigo, by Jigen at the end as well it made it a lot better as you can see. Uh, obviously he was already on low health as it was, but as you can see the damage overall was massive. And this might be actually the new foundation to how combos work in Naruto Storm Connections, is you will no longer be able just to mass circle and do your infinites and then combos to UJs. I mean, you can do those, it's just you're not going to get a lot of damage off. Your best bet now is to actually be using your jutsus as much as possible within your combos to actually provide maximum damage output if you're going for optimal combos. One thing that myself and E always say during our videos and even during tournament commentaries is optimization is always key when performing a combo or performing a set of moves. You want to make sure that you're getting the highest amount of damage in the shortest amount of time possible before substitutions come back or before they have some sort of escape mechanic like a support or something. Not only this, but this actually does encourage a lot of combo creativity and a lot of different avenues for different combos. I'm not gonna lie to you, like a lot of the characters we were playing, we were throwing out lots of different jutsus in lots of different areas, cancelling in various ways and converting into new different types of jutsus, hits, UJs, you name it, it was amazing for all of us. All of us actually managed to pick up a more of a deeper like creativity streak out of it and it was some really fun. So going forward, you will have to find yourself that you will want to be learning how to implement both of your characters jutsus within combos and how you can combine them with your support jutsus. But then this leads me on to my next thing. All over Twitter, I've been talking about how switching is going to be done less and that uh, basically switch tech and switch buffering will be done a lot less due to the slow on support buildup. So then you're put in this position of deciding, okay, do I want to prioritize leader switching within my approach or do I want to save my supports for their jutsus for extra stun and extra damage? This is where you have to be careful in terms of how you play. We didn't actually really come to terms of it rather until recently, well rather myself, I didn't actually come to terms of this knowledge until literally just last night when I got home. I was thinking to myself, I actually have to be very careful in terms of how I use my supports. Do I use them for switch tech? Do I use them for blue dash leader switching? 
or do I just use them for general neutral game pressure? Or do I save them for e like elongated combos? Do I use them during my combos to make them longer, higher damaging, or even just very optimal damage setups? This obviously requires a lot more testing, a lot more different scenarios. This is like a question that, you know, has an answer within like 100 or so matches. So this is something that we can look at more when the game comes out. But we did find that one thing is guaranteed is that you can get a mass amount of damage in just a short amount of time as long as you're good at coordinating different attacks together and timing things correctly. Like in my combo, I had to make sure that Naruto was pretty much throwing his clones near the start of Jigen's Jutsu. If I did it too late, then Naruto's clones would actually miss. So I had to make sure that the clones would connect because they can only connect in a small time window. So this is where the skill is involved. There is skill involved with these combos as well. It is very important. And like I said in one of my Twitter posts, fundamentals, precision and accuracy is key as well as sub management and other just fundamental base features are all key when it comes to making sure that you're playing connections at the highest best possible rate you can but anyways that is everything that i just wanted to relate on to you guys is the combo potential and how combo structures have now changed as a whole in connections in comparison to naruto storm 4 honestly guys when you get into connections forget what you know in storm 4 you're going to be finding yourself spamming jutsus a lot more than you already do and if you guys have any questions or any queries about anything connections related be sure to ask me down in the comment section and i'll be sure to answer them to the best of my ability i've been reading a lot of your comments lately and i've been appreciating all your support and all of your questions in regards to storm connections and as always been your boy poison akami janet